Hey, what is up ladies and gentlemen, I'm Duffy Duck here once again, and I'm back for some more of yet again for the likes of the Maxi Toys videos once again. So ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to more play, and Pac-Man just somehow managed to eat his power pellets while he is actually in the idol animation right there. So anyways though, uh, welcome back to more let's play of Pac-Man World for the PlayStation. So last time we did manage to able to be completely done with the first half of the forms of the factory world, which is essentially one of my least favorite worlds of the entire game. At least as far as I will get to that point until October, by the way. And today for this episode is the fact that we're also well able to conclude uh, the factory world by going through the third level as well as the boss fights after this. And let me tell you off the bat though, I'm actually not looking forward to this next level because the next level, as you can tell, it will probably have to be one of my least favorite levels in the whole entire game, or not the least favorite. I really do not like this level. The level name is, by the way, is Down the Tubes, by the way, because, well, if you couldn't tell already about the fact that, well, we'll get to that whenever we're able to actually slowly approach onto that one particular section coming up. But, on the other hand, though, it won't be the worst stage in the whole game, but it's just that, well, it will be kind of tedious, though, whenever we get to the, uh, the halfway point of the stage. Well, it's not so bad in the actual stage itself, but if you really want to go after everything, most notably with the Pac-Man letters, and I believe this is the level that we might actually rescue um, another one of Pac-Man's friends, which appears to be Pac Jr., which I mistakenly said about the fact that in a uh, the previous videos, I accidentally did say uh, Pac-Man Jr. instead of Pac Jr., but it turns out it was actually Pac Jr. instead. So even then, though, because of this, though, um, then again, in order to actually reach the very end of the game, most notably trying to fight against with, uh, Togman, you must able to actually able to rescue all of your Pac-Man's friends, because if you don't, and if you miss one of them, well, you need to go ahead and backtrack to the previous stage until you're able to rescue one of Pac-Man's friends, then you should be able to be good to go by this, uh, by this point in time. So, anywho, though. So, yeah, you probably get the idea about this is going, though, and, uh, this is where the actual- Oh, I- not to mention because of all the fact that with that particular section coming up, that one, one of the things I really don't like about this level is that it's also kind of really damn long as well. Easily without doubt, one of the longest levels in the whole entire game. Well, at least if you expect if you want to include the, uh, the ruined sets of worlds here and there as well. But I honestly don't think that the ruined worlds wasn't that long to begin with, if I have to be honest. But to be more accurate, this stage in particular was actually one of the longest levels in the whole entire game because, well, you see why until whenever we're able to continue our progression with the forms of this particular stage. Now, if you couldn't tell already, this is actually my second attempt with this recording session. Um, most notably because this stage in particular, I will say, this is easily one of the weakest levels in the whole game. Or, in this case for this matter though, is one of my least favorite levels in the whole entire game because, well, then again, we'll mention more now whenever we get to that specific section what I'm going to talk about. But let's not going to be too negative or anything like that. But it's just that I just want to point you guys about something how much I really hate this level so much. Well, at least as far as in particular though. Because either way though, that uh, expecting the difficulty might actually start to slightly increase upwards. And uh, also that to top it all off is the fact that we might actually get a lot of emphasis on trial and error every now and then. Which either way though, it happens on most occasionally. So either way though, we'll uh, try to at least accept that. So yeah, today's day is the forms of uh, the 19th of September in 2019. And tomorrow, that the Link's Awakening remake will be released tomorrow for the Nintendo Switch. And to top it off, uh, the new Let's Play will be up at some point tomorrow as well, which even then, uh, that could be so much more of a hint before able to actually celebrate for releasing, you know, Link's Awakening Remake on the Nintendo Switch. So even then, I'm really looking forward to able to see how this will turn out to be. So, that's for everything else though, when it comes to news, updates, or anything like that, and son of a biscuit, stupid, um, spinning cockwheels that is coming out of the ceiling, but... Luckily though, we respawn into where the checkpoint is, and the actual saving progression was actually a little bit more generous with us, to say the least. So even then though, I'm very glad that was the case. So anywho though. So anyway though, yeah, the beginning portion is not too bad though, with the forms of this particular stage itself, because you go through likely uh, the usual platforming stuff again. 
But whenever we get to the actual halfway point at this stage, especially noticeable whenever we uh, bump into the forms of uh, uh, Park Jr. of all things, um, as you can see right there, that you know with these little uh, chemist enemies that we've already come across into ever since the very beginning of this world? Um, I think the best strategy for this guy though is the fact that I highly recommend you able to use the pack dots uh, uh, shooting aiming style because that way you're able to actually deal with them super easier than the forms of how it does it on just a simple butt bounce more than anything. So either way though, that's one thing I uh, forgot to do that up until right about now. So even then though, relatively speaking, I somehow forgot to do that up until now. But anywho though, um, yeah, because obviously that, um, New stuff has been happening during the forms of some of these gaming departments. Well, unfortunately there's only two of those news things I'd like to be able to discuss, but uh, we'll mention more of those whenever we get to the actual, uh, the halfway point of the stage. Because not, not only that though, because of how the fact that this stage might take a really, really, really long time to able to finish up with, and especially no support just to, you know, if you manage to try to collect everything of this game actually offers us to, then uh, chances are you might be able to actually just get a lot of backtracking heavy moments. But either way though, aside from all that stuff on the other hand though, there's not much else to really say. But um, even then I will grab the banana right here, so that way we can refer all downwards, so that way we could. Um, able to see what's up ahead for that specific locked door for the sake of able to actually collecting anything. So either way though. I'm hoping for this point, guys, is the fact that hopefully we're able to catch up on more of those recording sessions for those most days, so that way I don't feel like going for the actual likely to stay, uh, the busy work, uh, moody or anything like that. But anywho, though, um, so far anyway, though, when it comes to progressions with the forms of current Let's Plays that we are still doing, like, obviously I'm still on, uh, the halfway point of the factory world, so hopefully by that time, uh, why do I just do that? Oh jeez, that was pretty dumb of my, uh, decisions to make. So we'll just, uh, screw these little pack dots, as you can tell, and just pretty much go move forward. But either way, though, we'll, uh, leave it up to that as it goes on. But anywho, though. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention about this for a little, uh, brief moment's notice, is that this game does technically also has a widescreen TV option, which, I don't know, if I actually did manage to test that out, and I was gonna able to originally try to do that in the actual gameplay, but I don't know, I'll find out for myself whenever I'm able to actually think about it. So, paying who, paying who though, let's just go ahead and use the, uh, the metal power-up, so that way we could, able to actually bust out the actual, uh, box, and then, uh, well, the actual switch, so that way we can able to actually do with, uh, probably is the most tedious part about this stage, and that is, a lot of swimming. Yes, I repeat, a lot of swimming in this stage. So even then though, and it's also it's like a maze uh, kind of level. Well, at least I'll give the actual, uh, the maze some credit for. At least they may be able to actually not, not feel like overstayed or welcome. But in this stage in particular, I think to me though, it kind of reminds me of that particular stage from, uh, well, Crash Bandicoot, uh, The Wrath of Cortex, where you have to go for a serious amount of, uh, underwater segments worth noting for, but either way though, it's just that, it's just a lot of busy work, and it's also quite a lot of emphasis on backtracking, as you can tell, because, uh, obviously, if you can tell already, we've actually now come across into Pac Jr., but we somehow, we need to get that key somehow, though, but, uh, in order to actually get the key, though, is that we need to do a whole bunch of combinations of certain things, like, for instance, fruit gathering, as well as the forms of a lot of emphasis on metal power-ups that you need to use. So that, by the way, if you manage to accidentally obtain uh, the actual metal cap or the actual metal power-up, I keep thinking of Super Mario 64 for some reason. Um, if you somehow activate that particular um, power-up, specifically the Metal Pac-Man power-up, and if you somehow accidentally died in the process, uh, there is no respawning point if you're able to actually just manage to able to mess up or what have you, uh, up until when it gets to the point where, um, there is this one particular section in this level though that I'm always having trouble with, because even though I don't know if you couldn't tell, um, this particular stage only took me for about two attempts, and I think this is the only level I've actually got into on my, uh, original PS1 version. Well, to be more specifically, on my old, uh, PlayStation 1 memory card at this point, because let me tell you, I absolutely despise this stage for about a few worth noting for, and because of this though, there's gonna be a lot of emphasis on backtracking, as I said before, and it's also it's like a maze kind of ish area, you know, one of the forms of that second sequence worth noting for. But if you somehow made one simple mistake with your metal power up of any sort, 
Well, we're probably not gonna get anything for 100%ing on it, including rescuing Pac Jr. So you only have to do is for about one attempt only if you manage to succeed for this ride. So, yeah, it's not that great of that specific level as far as I'm aware. But luckily though, the end of the level is just not that far from here though, because of this though. Um, assuming if you really want to go and beat the actual main game, specifically uh, you know, trying to reach Togman as the final boss in the game. Well, you have to able to actually save one of Pac-Man's friends in order to actually continue proceeding for your, well, for the sake of your journey. Because as a result, though, it was required. On this case, uh, Pac-Man's friends, including the forms of Pac Jr., was mandatory in order to actually beat the game. Because if you don't rescue the forms of these Pac-Man's friends on that specific one journey up ahead, you can't win. Because only the forms of Pac-Man's friends were able to actually allows you to able to access to, well, the actual battle between, you know, Pac-Man and Tark-Man until the actual final world in the game. But, uh, either way though, we'll not get ahead of ourselves at this point just yet, because obviously, we're still exploring for the forms of the, uh, this particular level itself, because of this though. Um, since that, you guys might find this level a little bit tedious and it's slightly boring. I think I should probably able to actually get a little bit more of a discussion when it comes to news and updates alike. Uh, for instance, for example, during the forms of uh, the 16th of September, which is about uh, three days ago, that I think Mario has not mentioned about that since Super Mario Odyssey Let's Play. Uh, recently, there's actually a new trailer from the forms of Mario and Sonic at the Olympic Games Tokyo 2020. And uh, this time around though, the new trailer actually showcased the, um, some of these dream events. Well, unfortunately there are only three of them though, unlike 11 from the likes of the Olympic Winter Games in Vancouver, as well as the forms of 10 dream events on London 2012. And I think Sochi 2014 actually has like, um, a world classified for saying 8 dream events, which is a little bit more, uh, lesser for a small extent, but, uh, Seemingly to say though, it's going back into the forms of the original game's roots by able to actually add in a little bit amount of the uh, the actual dream events. Like, at least in the original game, like specifically in Beijing 2008 rendition of Mario and Sonic at the Olympic Games, they did at least manage to able to add in like four dream events. But somehow they managed to make it three this time around though, because I think it's most notably because of the actual main focus is for... Uh, you know, for the most recent uh, 3D Mario game has been released, as well as uh, the most recent Sonic game has been released for this point. Well, to be more specifically, the 3D uh, Sonic, as well as the 3D Mario, which is to be more specifically Super Mario Odyssey, like I mentioned before, as well as Sonic Forces. So either way, though, relatively speaking, unfortunately for those some fans out there, um, unfortunately though, there won't be any environments takes place from the likes of Sonic Mania or something like that, which is kind of a shame, because I just wish if how the fact that that would be the case, especially noticeable as like a, uh, when it gets like a 3D rendition of the specific, uh, Stadiopolis Zone, because, um, Stadiopolis Zone is without a doubt to me though, one of my favorite stage, one of my favorite zones in the entire game, alongside with the forms of Press Garden Zone from, the. Uh, you know, Sonic Mania slash Sonic Mania Plus, as well as uh, Mirage Saloon, and also uh, Titanic uh, Montage or something like that. Again, I do, I do apologize with the actual sprite limitations, as you can see, for that specific lava, as you can see. I'm not sure, I'm pretty sure this is actually lava, more rather than the forms of, like, uh, a yellow liquid or something like that. Oh, I don't know. I can't really tell about the forms of the actual uh, environmental hazards sometimes. But anywho, though. So now we managed to gather ourselves the actual glorious pair, and now we need to be able to make our way back to uh, go up to the actual first floor, and then that way we could be able to actually just to rescue Pac Jr. So even then though, what makes this a little bit tedious to be able to actually just to save Pac Jr. though, is that you have to go for a serious amount of floors if you manage to be able to somehow do that, and it's also, you need to avoid a lot of hazards, including sharks as well as these little, uh, steaming red uh, pipes and all that such, which uh, obviously much like in Crash Bandicoot is that if you touch those whatsoever, then you're obviously going to get hurt. And also, I found the camera angle on these segments like this can be very, very slightly off, because especially noticeable, you can't really see what's up ahead, especially if you can't see what's on the top or the very bottom, and it's just a lot of memorization if you really want to avoid SON OF A BISCUIT! Oh jeez, that, that's the part I was talking about, but I get a strong feeling 
that we actually somehow respawn into here somehow. Which, uh, thankfully for me, as far as I'm aware of the specific stuff, it will able to actually lead me back up a little bit. But if you keep on dying multiple times, you have to restart where the checkpoint is. So that's a little bit stingy on that part. But uh, if you manage to get the hang of it though, assuming if you don't usually get hit by anything, like for instance sharks, as well as the forms of those uh, steaming pipes and all that stuff, then you weren't able to actually avoid those just fine well enough, but it's just that it can be a rather annoying nuisance sometimes, especially whenever you're trying to able to backtrack and then just... Overall, this is generally is one of the worst levels of the game in my opinion, just because, well, it's going to be a lot of emphasis on backtracking, you know? And I think if you come towards from here, I think I get the feeling that it might actually give me uh, go all the way back, which I'm assuming that's what that is. And we'll ignore the right section from now on, because we need to focus on, you know, rescuing Pac Jr., which I think I'm actually going to do that on my own time, whenever I manage to play as on my PlayStation 1. So either way though, that way I can get my uh, extra chances of proceeding on things. And since after all we got ourselves a pair, so this means we can now able to continue things on. And uh, just mind out for the actual steams coming for these little sewer pipes. And oh god, these ghosts. And then if we somehow activate that switch, we get ourselves a glorious key. Thankfully though, the key was actually near uh, nearby compared to the forms of how it does it on uh, some other levels in mind. But either way though, here's the thing though, we need to avoid a lot of ghosts. So, but hopefully though, assuming we can able to actually eat all of them though, all in one that specific segment, then at least we got some bit of health back. So at least we ought to be pretty okay as it is. And by the way, if you somehow accidentally miss... Uh, the actual pack dot, well, it's a giant bottomless pit, if you don't uh, time it well enough for your jumps or what have you. So, anyways, that takes care of that, and as you can see, the water starts now starts to rise. So even then, though, this means we can now finally reach to, well, Pack Jr. So even then, though, hopefully we can able to unlock him out, out of the cage, and we are essentially done with this tediousness. Cool, thanks for your, for the rescue. Swim out, swim out one pipe to exit. I am so out of here. Yeah, because this level can be very confusing sometimes, especially because of the actual process of able to actually deal with, you know, for basically for everything, including forms of likely just trying to get um, every single of those Pac-Man's letters if you really want to go for the bonus stage and stuff like that. But either way, though, and also, yeah, I get a feeling that particular metal power-up will not respawn at all. So. Jesus Christ, this level actually took me for about 17 minutes so far. I mean, seriously, 17 minutes? That's way too much for this point. At least if you really want to go for 100% completion on this level, though, that's the same much. But anywho, though. But other than that, I think I have no major issues with the actual Maces system with this particular game so far. Or even compared to the forms of how it does it in the future sequels, which is essentially uh, Pac-Man World 2. As well as Pac-Man World 3, where you do have, like, a uh, limited amount of chance, instead of, like, uh, you know, continuously, uh, continue your progression on this particular, uh, as far as for that point. But anywho, though, let's just go ahead and get ourselves the last letter inside this little crate box, and sure enough, we get ourselves a Pac-Man's full name. But you hope that takes care of that, and we can able to do some multi-butt uh, bouncing onto that specific part. I do like, I will say, I really like the actual musical track on this stage, but that's the only positive thing about this stage. But apart from that, though, I seem to be able to actually think this is still as one of my least favorite stages in the whole game. If only if you really want to go for the 100% completion, that's for sure. So anyway, anyway, so let's try this bonus game again, and I'm hoping we can able to actually succeed for this point, and, uh... You know, we can able to actually activate the actual switches. I think what the game really tells me to do is the fact that we need to activate all the switches first, and then you would able to actually just do likely activate the actual pack dots, and then that way you would able to actually get uh, collected everything on that spot. So hopefully we'll get enough time for able to actually collect them all. Oh yeah, one second to react. Nice one. And hopefully for that time, we can able to actually get even more extra lives due to the forms of those pack dots, as well as the forms of basically for everything else. So we got 53 or 54 if you really want to be more precise with, so... I'm guessing we're pretty much good for now one though, where it comes to likely just trying to stack up even more extra lives, because until uh, by the end of the game though, especially noticeable in the final world of the game, uh, don't expect me to be able to actually come across into a lot of trial and error anytime soon. 
So either way though, that takes care of that. And let's go ahead and save our game quickly so I don't have to touch that level ever again. Well, assuming if I was trying to able to play this on my own time as it is. So, 69%. Not too bad though, not too shabby either, but only got a little bit more better. If I manage to go after every single mazes from uh, the Ruins world, as well as the forms of the Space world essentially. As well as the bonus games from time to time. So, dude, there are more friends to rescue. You have to totally save them. Well, we've already got one more friend left, which appears to be by the forms of, well, Miss Pac-Man, and that would be at the very end of the game. So, we're still, let's take care of the actual boss in this world, which we have, uh, Chrome Keeper, which, um, uh, it appears to be, out of all the actual bosses in this game, uh, this one, along, or this guy, rather, alongside with the forms of the final boss, which we'll get into that at some point in Halloween Day, um, Generally, it has a, f a health bar this time, which either way though, for this boss in particular, oh, I did not notice, is, uh, the water itself is actually poisonous, so I think that's actually a good thing we need to use the metal uh, power up to begin with, so this entire boss fight plays out, basically we need to activate all these switches, which by the way, these switches are uh, heat perfective, because uh, if you somehow touch them, or in this case if you actually activate them with uh, you know, just regular Pac-Man, you're able to reduce your damage. But, in order to actually deal with this particular guy, as you can see right there, uh, basically we can able to actually activate all these uh, four switches in each of the sides. And then if you somehow activate our uh, four switches, there is actually that fifth switch that we can able to active from. And uh, if you somehow activate all five switches on that specific face, then it'll deal the damage on this particular robot guy. Although what makes this a little bit trickier in comparison to any other bosses so far is that, well, if you if you leave it there for a long period of time, and also we get ourselves this very annoying uh, gimmick, as you can see right there, which we somehow, if you somehow manage to get yourselves a metal power-up with you, uh, there, there's actually this very annoying ma magnetic uh, contraption with you, because if you somehow manage to get close by it, especially if you're able to become metal to begin with, uh, what happens is, is that you automatically manage to get dragged with that specific metal contraption or this magnetic uh, thing right there. And then, in order to actually break from it though, it's the fact that you have to able to press multitude of buttons multitude of times if you manage to break free. And that can get pretty annoying at times, especially for that one particular segment where I seem to able to activate all the switches. But sometimes though, I always get screwed over by that one particular magnetic... Uh, uh, contraption if you can tell and then that way yeah as you can see right there if I was gonna able to make it to able to actually activate all the switches in time sometimes I always get screwed over by the forms of stunning parts like this so even then though as a result though it can be very annoying as a gimmick for that specific specific side of things but either way though that's as far as I can tell for that point so but the upside though is the fact that this boss wasn't nearly as hard as the forms of how it does it in King Galaxian to, to be honest because well I just found that boss significantly frustrating in the forms of that specific run through and of course yeah I don't think I've got enough time for that so because yes this boss also has a, some sort of like, like a time limit if you manage to try to activate all the switches then in order to actually do it properly is that you need to make your way there as much as your fastest time as possible. I, I'm pursuing you might actually get like 20 seconds at minimum until you're able to actually make it in time. But even then, though, that's as far as I can usually think about this for the time. So anyways, let's uh, take a hit anyway for not only just for this guy right here, but it's also for myself. So, and hopefully by that time comes, then we are surely, we are about to be concluded the factory worlds during that time. So, uh, let's get into the enough of discussion I'd like to point things out. Is that... Uh, we got ourselves the actual release date of the forms of not only one, but three Dragon Quest games coming to the Nintendo Switch. Which there were obviously pa uh, Dragon Quest 1, Dragon Quest 2, and 3. And those games are about to due out around the same day as Dragon Quest 11S. So this means we're actually technically getting ourselves um, four of those Dragon Quest games uh, coming out on the exact same day between each other. Which I think is about to due out on the 27th of September. Which I think we actually got about, um, I would say by the forms of like, um, eight days ago, whenever that happens. So even I know for some fans of Dragon Quest out there, we'll actually be super excited to able to play these games again. 
But this time around, though, you can play on the go or something. Although, I haven't really looked upon that much of Dragon Quest, to be honest with you, apart from those one occasional stuff where uh, the only time I'm actually interested with the Dragon Quest series as a, as a whole is when they actually did manage to decide to do some crossover games with Mario. Although, at the moment right now, they only done like three of them from now on, which there are... Well, obviously Mario Sports Mix, as well as the Japanese exclusive game on the Nintendo DS, which is the uh, Otakai uh, Street DS, as well as, um, you know, Boom Street slash Fortune Street for those who live in North America. So, you probably get the, uh, the idea about that solution right there, and we'll take another hit, so... Stupid magnetic uh, contraptions there, but either way though, hopefully though, this guy will be down for good. So, either way though, there's some extra lives that you can able to get up there, but I honestly found it's a little bit of a pain to get up there though, but I have no idea how on earth do I supposed to get those, but anywho though. But regardless of such though, I'll be like, uh, whatever, because I already got a whole bunch of extra lives for now on though, so even then, there's not much else to worry about this as it is. Oh, okay, I might as well take the invincibility frame, so that's pretty cool. So either way though, I think he's actually got about two more hit points left, so hopefully he'll be down by then. So as long as we're able to don't get hit several times, because I'm pretty sure to you is that unlike in any other bosses is that uh, obviously we actually contains checkpoints in between. Um, this boss, alongside with the final boss, which we'll get into that at some point in Halloween Day, um, it does not have any checkpoints this time around. So if you manage to somehow accidentally die, um, either with the forms of those a uh, whole bunch of hazards that you need to worry about, uh, if you somehow die in the middle of the boss fight, and if you have to go for all that slog again, excuse me, you have to go for all that slog again, which makes it a little bit tedious enough as it goes on, but even then, uh, yeah, I'm gonna have to restart on that particular phase, because, well, I just can't even believe I just almost get, like, screwed over at points. But anywho, though, um, yeah, and I think that's as far as I can go for this point, aside from, uh, you know, Mario and Sonic at the Olympic Games Tokyo 2020, uh, new trailer, which shows off the actual dream events to see, well, we already know about the dream, dream events on now, because we've already, uh, know about the forms of Dream Racing, as well as, or Dream Race, I should say, as well as the forms of Dream Karate, as well as uh, Dream Shooting, and we already know about this kinds of stuff already, because we've already seen these kinds of stuff ever since during the forms of uh, the Tokyo Game Show and during the actual Sega conferences and stuff. So, anywho though, so let's go ahead and deal with this last hit, and sure enough, when all the uh, eight pieces of health is down, then he's down into a completely, um, the head has been got off. So, anyways, and I think that pretty much takes care of every single levels in the factory world. So, thank goodness for that. Because let me tell you that, although don't get me wrong, this world is cool and all. But I will say, out of all the worlds in this game, this one is actually one of my least favorite worlds of the game. But, either way, though, that's probably be because of how the fact that with the third level in mind, I just can't believe that level is so confusing. But, anywho, though... In terms of, like, you know, getting everything on that part. So, that takes care of those five worlds, and especially for five friends that we've rescued. It only comes to, to you know, we now ended up now onto the sixth, and this is, might actually be the final world in the entire game. Which appears to be the Mansion World. So, even then, though, I think this might be a perfect timing to discuss upon this. I think we might actually deal with the forms of this world at some point in October. So, even then, though, uh, join me next time on Let's Play Pac-Man World is the fact that we might actually get things started with the Mansion World. And as I mentioned before, I'm actually going to be saving this up until October, just because for the sake of the fitting season for Halloween, as well as some Autumn Department. And hopefully, though, we'll be able to actually rescue uh, Miss Pac-Man along the way. So, see you guys then. Later, fellas.